Hi everyone! Welcome back to another stream! It was a pretty long time ago since I did this uh, last time. and It has been Easter, I've been home with the kids, I've been busy with work, but now I have decided to continue to do this. Uh, I will try to do this on Tuesdays and Thursdays as before. I did it for, I think, five weeks in a row uh, before uh, the break. Uh, but now the plan is to continue to do this uh, again on a regular basis. So, Tuesday, 12 o'clock, Thursday, 12 o'clock, I plan to do streaming. And I will talk about mobile stuff, of course, I will talk about .NET and some Azure stuff, as I used to do. Before uh, this break, uh, on the 10 streams I did, I worked with my Blazor mobile app. Uh, uh, I used mobile Blazor bindings uh, to build an app, or I started to build an app. Uh, the app was a retail app where you can browse products, you can add them to cart, you can search, and we built a backend using uh, Azure Search, Azure functions and Cosmos DB so we will continue to, on that but um, just before I started this stream I realized I also want to talk a little bit about .NET MAUI because we have a preview now on .NET MAUI uh, it's the third preview, preview 3 uh, and uh, we also are on preview 3 of .NET 6 Actually, I think it's the second preview of .NET MAUI, but uh, it is uh, the third preview of .NET 6, and I guess they want to match the numbers. So if you want to read more about that, you can go to the blog post that our friend David Ortino have written on the Microsoft Dev Blogs. Uh, so here it is. We can see that we have Windows Desktop support with WinUI. Uh, so that's great, uh, and here we also can read how to get started. I tried this uh, with the .NET MAUI sh check tool uh, written by Jonathan Dick. Uh, so it, you just install it like this, .NET tool install, Reddit .NET MAUI check, and then you will run it and it will check all, uh, check if you have everything you need, and if you don't, it will try to install it. So that's a good way to get everything you need to run .NET MAUI. So you can do that and it will also install .NET 6 Preview 3 if you don't have done that yet. And it will work fine to have them side by side with the .NET 5 and .NET Core 3, 3.1. Uh, I have that and it's I don't have an issue. Uh, so that will be fine, but I think I'm not using the ARM version of the .NET 6. Uh, uh, but uh, I had a colleague, he installed the ARM version, and it seemed that he had some problem. Uh, he had it running with his game first, but after that he had some problems. So I recommend you to do like I did and install .NET 6 with the .NET MAUI check tool. So here we can take a look about how your first application can look. You can see that we have a startup. We'll browse the code of the sample project soon and see if we can get it running. I just cloned the project right before this stream started. So that will be interesting. Uh, we have an application. We have Windows. That's nice. And, uh, MAUI will also have support for multi-windows. I don't know if it have that in this preview, but we will see. Uh, so we can see here how to handle native stuff. Yeah, some updates to control and layouts. We have a lot of community contributors now. That's great. So uh, that makes it possible for us to uh, contribute to the MAUI if you want to. Some great stuff for accessibility. That's nice. And of course, they want feedback. And um, uh, I think they want it on uh, on GitHub. Just create an issue if you have feedback uh, or comment on an already created issue. So let's dive into Visual Studio to see if we can get .NET MAUI running. Uh, 
uh, so here we have a lot of errors but it's just intelligence error and so uh, it successfully build the the ios project so that's nice uh, so we can close that one down uh, but it doesn't find any simulators but we maybe can maybe we can run this from the terminal uh, view terminal dot net run hello ios okay let's try this can't find a project to run ensure project exists uh, okay selected projects of course we need to have first well, let's see what happened now you can also go to the repository for this sample project dot net slash net six mobile samples and here there are some instructions how to get started as well uh, dot to launch the iOS project on a simulator. Okay, .NET build, hello iOS. Okay, let's try that instead. Uh, here we have Visual Studio. This was not the MAUI sample. Here we have that uh, terminal is here. Try to close it down. Uh, then we run this instead. .NET build, hello iOS. Let's see what happened now. Seems that that worked a lot better we will also be able to use uh, Visual Studio Code for creating .NET MAUI apps and that is great if you like Visual Studio Code myself is more a fan of using the full Visual Studio Visual Studio for Mac mostly but uh, uh, Visual Studio Code can also be nice because it's pretty lightweight uh, so that's nice that they added that too because many people I've heard many people s that said that they want to they want to use uh, Visual Studio Code okay let's see what happened nothing yet uh, could take some while to build an um, .NET uh, app especially an iOS app here we can also see that we have a lot of things in this shared project. Uh, we have info p list, Android uh, stuff in our in the shared project, and I guess they're using multi-targeting to achieve that. So let's take a look at the CS project file when we're waiting for uh, the build. Yeah, it started on an iPad. Okay, great. At least something happened. That's maybe it's the first simulator in the <laughs> in the simulator list. So it will take a few seconds to start that. So we can go back here and see what they have done in in the project file. Single project, true. Yeah, okay. Uh, runtime condition iOS, the, um, uh, but nothing about the folders here. So that's so. Oh, well, he here we have it. Uh, some conditions that uh, if it's OS X, we'll use include that platform. Okay. So it's basically multi-targeting, and that's nice. And then we can see all uh, dependencies here. We have dependencies of Microsoft Maui. 6.0.100.preview blah 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 so that matches the the version number of .NET 6 okay so that's great let's see if it's started wow here we have our, our first .NET MAUI app running on the iOS simulator but it doesn't seem to do that much <laughs> uh, okay let's see why is this maybe this main page welcome to the not maui no it doesn't look like that hello ios Let's see what this have for dependencies app delegate okay so that is not the maui app it's just the mobile.net 6 okay so let's 
Let's try to run the Maui app instead. Uh, see if you can close it. Yes, we could. Uh, then we do instead of hello uh, iOS, we try with hello Maui. Keep your fingers crossed that this will work. Nope. The target run does not exist in the project. Okay, let's go here and see what they saying in the documentation. iOS from Visual Studio. Current only the iOS simulator is supported, not the remote simulator. Okay. Uh, known issues are no problem. Visual Studio code. Visual Studio for Mac is not supported at this time. But we'll okay. Does that mean that we cannot run it? But we can probably do that with. Uh, this command instead. Uh, so let's try that. Uh, even if we cannot do it from Visual Studio, we should be able to do it with a with a command from the terminal. Uh, so at we can use the terminal inside of Visual Studio, or we can use it from the outside. Uh, here we can use it from inside of Visual Studio. Okay, let's see if it works. Uh, restoring packages. Yeah, seems to work better now at least. So let's see what happened. It looks promising, I think. So don't do. A lot of weight, but why not take a look at the code while we're waiting? Uh, so we can start with a startup. Uh, so this is something we didn't have in Xamarin Forms, but uh, something that we have now, uh, and it's very similar to what we have in a regular .NET or .NET Core app. We have a startup and we have a configure, where you can set set things up. I wonder if we have also have a configure services. For example, if we want to add dependency injection, it would be strange if we don't have, doesn't have that. So that con, but I'm not sure if the intelligence is with me. Doesn't seems like that. Config. Okay. So why? Ew. Here we have it, configure services. Okay, that's great. Uh, do like that, maybe. See what happens, yeah. So here we can register our services, obby dot add. At a singleton, for example. Okay, that's great. That means that we don't have to add any third party uh, containers. Uh, okay, we have the dependency service in some forms, but I, I never think I use it in a real app uh, because it's so limited about what you could do. So, this is great that we have uh, dependency injection built in like this. I really like that. Okay, then we can configure fonts. It's, uh, this is similar about the embedded forms in Xamarin Forms. So that's nice. Uh, so we can go here to the see what main window is. Page is this maybe instead of application. No, we still have application here with the app.sam.cs. Uh, okay, let's see what that. Okay, here we create a window. It's an overridden method. Okay, so then we return the main window. Okay, so this is the main window, and we can set the page there instead. Okay, that's interesting. I think that will be great. 
Okay, let's see what happened with in our terminal. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's still working, or maybe it have started that. Yes, it has. Woohoo! Here is .NET MAUI running on iOS and iPad, so we can try to do something. Yeah, seems like they just have added some basic control here. Hi, MAUI. clicked 10 times okay I wonder if we can run this on Mac OS as well let's try and uh, just go here and see yeah does not 6 dash Mac catalyst okay uh, here is where is our terminal here it is so let's do like this instead see what happened Bum, bum, bum. It seems to be supported. I wonder if this, if it will run on x86 or if it will run on uh, on ARM. Uh, so we can check that when the app has started, maybe. So uh, no Windows has started yet. So I guess it's working with compiling the application. Okay, it took it took a while, and here okay here we can see it's, it is. Mac Catalyst X64 right now. Hopefully we will be able to run this native on the M1, not with the Rosetta, uh, because .NET 6 will have support for ARM, so that will po hopefully be possible in the future. Okay, what happened now? And here we have an error. The command bam bam exit with code one. Okay, build fail. The command. Um, the, the application cannot be open for unexpected reasons. Uh, okay, let's see if we missed something here. Wind. Need to specify target via the F switch. We have done that. Uh, let's see, Mac Catalyst. Running and debugging atmosphere is not supported at this time, no. I understand that. And now it should hopefully work. Okay, ah, wait, let's try again, see if it works better now. Uh, we need to be in the correct place. So we run .NET build, hello Maui, run and for Mac Catalyst. Could be fall. Oh, it started, great. Here we have it. .NET MAUI running on a Mac using Catalyst. Great. Cool. Hi, MAUI. Yes, and we have a slider. We still have switch. We can click this button here too. Uh, we can resize the window. Even if this icon seems a bit clipped but it works yeah so this is dotnet maui preview 3 uh, we can probably play with this for hours but for today we'll continue with uh, the blazer app so let's close this and uh, head over here to the app 
and see if we could remember what we did last time. Uh, but first, we can close all the windows uh, we have open and take a look at uh, the solution we have here to refresh our mind about the app and about what we did. Yeah, it seems that we should still is a bit tired. I have had that problem for a while now. It was better uh, for a couple of weeks, but now I have this issue with the Visual Studio freezing again. Uh, I don't know if it's related to that I'm running on the M1, but I don't think so because it have worked pretty well. Uh, but I installed an update here uh, for a couple of days ago and it seems that it has been worse again. Okay, so let's quit it and uh, restart it. Uh, it will be nice when we have uh, Visual Studio for Mac fully supported uh, for the M1. Hopefully we'll have that in the release of the .NET 6 later this year. But Visual Studio at least works a lot better than .NET Writer. I have a colleague that using, he used .NET Writer mostly on the Mac. Uh, for .NET development, but uh, he said that it is unusable more or less now with the M1. Uh, so he is back on using Visual Studio and without problems. I don't even know if he have had the freeze problem as I have, but now we're back here. We have clients. We have uh, Android, iOS, macOS, Windows. macOS will not work because we're using Xamarin.Form Shell. And Xamarin.Form Shell has not support for uh, Mac OS and Xamarin Forms. It will probably have with .NET MAUI because macOS will be be a catalyst. And Windows uh, and macOS will be first citizen in .NET MAUI. So that will be great. Uh, we also have this... Uh, shared project where we have components, we have pages, we have services, we have a web UI because we are using Blazor mobile bindings and uh, the Blazor web component. Uh, let's check what they call it now. Uh, you can go to the product details view uh, to see the exact name. So, but everything of this is Blazor. But the web part is with a web syntax, and this is with some sort of Xamarin Forms syntax. Yeah, they call it just Blazor Web View. Really strange color. Uh, I hope you can see them good. You can zoom so it will be easier to read. But I, I thought it was hard to read this purple color on the black background. So this is a way to have web content inside of your uh, native mobile apps. Uh, and I've heard Microsoft talking a lot of this, like mostly for desktop applications where you can have your Blazor app, your Blazor component inside of a desktop app and build like a Electron app, not, not an Electron app, an app with similar technology as Electron. You have a hybrid app using Blazor and C Sharp, uh, but you have a lot of... Uh, of uh, things that it works better with the Blazor Web View, I think, because with Electron they ship the, the Chrome runtime. Uh, with Blazor Web View, they're using the the web uh, renderer and the web engine that you have in the app, uh, just like the regular Web View. If you're doing a a mobile app, they're using that. But you have a shared process so you can communicate from the web content with native APIs. So that's really nice. I think I'm doing that here somewhere or if that was in another app where I was using Blazor WebView. Uh, maybe that is. We can go to my GitHub and I will show you. Uh, here is you have the code for this app 
you can go and download if you want to take a look at it but it was not what i wanted to show now i wanted you to sh wanted to show you the the code for the tiny service plus explorer is a desktop app that i'm building uh, using mostly web technologies uh, clients we have this web ui folder pages explorer page index i think it's here connections here somewhere i thought i used Summary essentials and the secure storage uh, connection variable element connection form uh, it's in the connection service so i call the connection service from web content uh, that uh, are able to use native uh, apis in this case via summary essentials so you can see here using summary essentials uh, and I have this same method where I save uh, connection strings to secure storage and I call that from from the web content in this uh, page here that I have with the blazer here I save it so this is pretty nice if you have content you want to reuse from your web pages you maybe have a lot of components then you can use them in a native app or you can take a, a whole web page if you want and add it to a native app and you, you maybe add some native navigation and push notification and things like the user expected to have native to have a great user experience so i think it will be pretty powerful even if i in many cases prefer to have a, nat a complete native UI. But many people like to have a shared UI and a shared experience between all the platforms and then it will be really nice, uh, especially if you are a web developer. If you like Blazor, you have done your Blazor components, your web pages, you can reuse that in a native app. So that's nice. Or you can do as I have did in this case, I have combined them we have some pages that are native UIs, some pages that are uh, Blazor web UI. So let's uh, run this app to see if it still works. Uh, we don't find any simulators, but it seems to be maybe we need to restart it. I have noticed this could happen when we have multiple instances of Visual Studio running at the same time where both are mobile apps. So if we close the simulator, we close all instances of Visual Studio and restart, we probably will have the simulators back. Uh, so here we are loading Visual Studio again. Sources. Okay. Hopefully, generic simulator. That's not a good sign. Yeah, we can use my iPhone, but that will not be that good on the stream. Okay, strange. Let's go here and see if we can do what they said. Check the SDK version, could work sometimes. Let's change the default there instead. Lower the deployment target, see over. Hmm. I think this current deployment target is 8.0, okay. I don't know why it says that, so, because that is not correct. Product version is 8, but that is probably the version of Xamarin iOS, so that will be fine. 
I wonder what the latest version of Xamarin iOS is. Uh, I can see what one I have installed. Uh, Xamarin iOS. So we are on 14. Uh, four, there's two, okay. Strange. Uh, let's open another app that I have and just check what we have there. Or we can create a new one to see what we'll get via the templates to see why we have eight there. But it was not that long ago I created this, so I think it's a bit strange that we have eight there. So I uh, create a new, we'll create a new project. Name version check. Yeah. Just put it in the default folder because I will delete this later. Uh, okay, where did that window? Ah, it's here now. One of the great things will that now we will also be that we will have the new, more, uh, new more improved format. Okay, so it's still product version eight. So that is not why we have a problem. Let's see if we find an any simulators here. Debug? No, just my iPhone that are on the same network. Mm, okay. This is a very irritated bug, I think. Let's check what we have here. My minimum system version is eight. Let's try to do 14 instead. See what happened. Maybe it, w it could be that, because it said that it's, uh, it said it was eight. Uh, so let's see what happened if we change here too. It's eight. Also change in this one. So let's say fourteen. That oh. Save. Yeah. Okay. That is the reason. Now I will have learned something new. Uh, okay, that's great. Then we can run, we can run this on, for example, iPhone 12, the regular 12, not the mini or the pro or the max. Okay, now we can close this window. We don't need it anymore, goodbye. So now it will take a while, I guess, to build this because we have not built it today. Uh, so it can take a little bit longer to do that the first time. See, we have some pack package updates, but it's uh, just summary forms, summary essentials. We still are on version 0.5.50 of the Blazor Mobile Bindings Preview. It was pretty long time that they have a release now. I guess they are busy with working with the .NET 6 and MAUI because they have said that it will work with the .NET MAUI and the SAML first in this version. Uh, and after that they will start experimenting more with things like MVU and Blazor. Uh, I think that is a little bit sad because I have expected to have um, Blazor support in the first s version of uh, MAUI and also MVU because they talked very much about that early. But um, I guess we will have to wait for .NET 7 to get that, at least have a stable version of it. But hopefully they will continue to work with the uh, mobile bindings after uh, the release of .NET 6. But we can also go and check how 
active they are. Let's see where the GitHub repository is. Uh, no, we can go here. Contribute. Yeah, here it is. .NET Mobile Blazor Binding. At least they have moved the repository to the .NET organization now from Xamarin. So let's see, this is the master br main branch. Uh, let's see the history there. Okay, looks like we don't have had any commits to the master branch since 16th of March. Maybe we have some other, we have a .NET 6 branch here also, okay. So they work, Steve Sanderson is working with, that's great. Uh, mostly with web views, I think. Okay, uh, let's see what alien build stuff, collection view, .NET 6 startup. Uh, okay, so there are work going on here at least. That's great. Uh, we can see that we have a lot of issues. We can blaze, okay, blaze the desktop plans and productization. Uh, here is good. Hello fans of mobile blazer bindings. As some of you may know, we are working on pro pro productizing some key components of mobile blazer bindings and will release them later this year. Okay, that's good as a part of .NET 6. Our main focus will be on desktop support for Windows and Mac OS, but we are looking to enable authoring apps on many platforms as possible. Okay, so that is mostly focus on the web view thing. I think, because that is what they're talking about when they're talking about Blazor Desktop. Uh, what does product, product, productization mean? This means that the future that ship in .NET 6 will be fully supported and not experimental. That's great. The feature will ab abide by all the same benefits and policies of er anything in .NET 6, such as compatibility, breaking changes, paid support, patches, releases, etc. Okay, great. The work for this will mostly be done in the ASP.NET Core repo because that's where the breadth of the blazer is and much of the code is shared. Okay. To get a glimpse of some of the future and issues we're looking, looking at, you can query issues when using feature blazer desktop. Okay, so there are work going on there. Yeah, there are discussion here if you want to read more about that. So here we can follow and see what they are doing with Blazor Desktop. Uh, I understand why they focus on those parts, but for me it's also interesting to be able to write the native uh, part of the applications with Blazor because I think uh, it's a good way to write code uh, and, I, uh, and I really like that. Uh, I have done some work with SAML now recently in another app I'm working with and I realized after doing this series on Blazor that SAML is very verbose or at least could be very verbose compared to Blazors and it's easier to have the ability to, sh to share code, did I say share code, to have C-sharp code in in the UI pages because it doesn't mean that you have to create uh, uh, properties for everything. Yeah. For example, I had uh, something like has single photo, has not single photo, blah, 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 blah. You create a lot of diff properties just to get bindings working. With Blazor, you don't have to do that. You can just add an if statement when you're rendering the UI. So that is one of the things that I really like with Blazor is that you can do that. Okay, the app has started on an iPhone 12, so we can go here, we can probably search for some products if the backend still is working. Yes, uh, it does, so we can go to product. Here, hopefully it will load. Yeah, but we have a breakpoint here that Stop the loading for a while. So uh, let's remove all breakpoints with except for the exception catch point. So we can see. Okay, so this is uh, web content. 
So everything you see here is web, but it looks like a mobile app because it's integrated in the mobile app. The only thing that can you can see this is a mobile app is probably because it's <laughs> the buttons here are the bootstrap default styling. Uh, so you can use the buttons here to change uh, uh, photos. Uh, we can probably add to cart. Cart is a native uh, cart native uh, view. So we can add one to cart here. Go to the cart, and this is will be in the mem in be in memory. Add to cart. Okay. Let's check why that not is working. So that could be our first task for today. Maybe we didn't have time to implement that in the stream we did. I don't really remember. Uh, yes, we have a cart updated uh, event using tiny pubsub. That is a messaging uh, library that Johan Carlson has created. Uh, so we can set the breakpoint there to see if that is triggered. We can also go to the product details web page that we are running inside of the app. Uh, initialize, add to cart, we set the breakpoint there and then we try again. I can see why it doesn't work. We have I have commented away that code. Okay, add to cart. Yes, we hit, hit the breakpoint. Uh, and we have quantity, yes, okay. Let's do like this, we stop the debugger, we try to add that code again, we can go and see everything works here. Okay, product, okay, what is item? Uh, uh, item is... I. I remember why we have this we, because cart is built for an old product model that we have. Uh, so let's rebuild that for the new model. And so we go to the cart service, we change pr the product item on all places where we have product. Uh, dun dun. Yeah, I know it will look a bit different. Just change. Here we already have. Ah, okay, we are inside the card item now. And um, here is the card service. Okay, so we probably have price saved here in another way. Uh, okay, price is on a variant. I guess. So let's take a look how this product item looks. Okay, so every variant will have a price. So that is probably uh, the case that we should add a variant here instead to the cart. Uh, product SKU, we have ID is the same as SKU in the new model. Uh, product item. Yes, product ID. Or we can do like this. We maybe need to have both the product item and actual variant of it added. A variant. So we'll do like that is that variant. And then we can have uh, Uh, where is the price thing? Here it is. Okay, it's in the cart item. Now we need to have the variant here. Public variant. variant. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but we can fix the problem for now. And this is also not an app that will go to production. Just an app to show how to work with Blazor. Uh, in a mobile app. So let's go back here and we also have uh, 
cards are add to cart. Let's do this. Let's say item dot variant dot first. Let's see if that is working. See if it builds or if we need to go and change the code somewhere else. That's the easiest and fastest way to find that is to run a build. Okay, we have a couple of more places to change. Uh, cart, ah, in the cart page. Let's see what we have here. We can minimize that window. Uh, we don't have the pr product price. Okay. Variant dot price instead. Yes. Variant dot price. Cannot convert from tackle store images to. Okay. Dot, uh, source like that, but then we need to have a null check here, so we can instead we can do like this image is um, null if or why not just add the if here instead, uh, so we don't show it an image either if we don't have one. So if this is null, okay, like that, then we can do just first instead of first or default because we know now it's not will not be null. And source is a string, so this will work. Uh, we can remove this code. Okay, let's try to run this. Okay, I just needed to check if I had any meetings at one, but uh, seems like I am free from meetings so we can continue to work to one o'clock. That's nice. So ABU. Yeah. So we have a lot of fishing tackle here. We can take that hug crook again. Yeah. Can practice your Swedish. Uh, add the cart. Okay, here we are. Yeah, updating the cart. Boop, boom, boop. Okay, variant is null. Yeah, of course it's null because we don't set it. I think, no, we didn't do that. So let's do that, variant is variant. And then we need to restart the app. Right now, this is just the static cart service. Uh, later, we can have the cart maybe in a database on the phone, or we can add a service in the backend that we have the cart so you can access the cart from other devices as well. Um, but for now, we focus on building UI. Then we can continue to build that later. So let's try again. I think we want to have one as default value here. Uh, so we can go and sh fix that before we forgot it. Uh, for input text for model.quantity. Ah, that's a string, that's the reason. So where we have the form model here. Uh, we can add one as default. Because we don't have any hot reload, it will not affect this run, but it will be there for the next one. Add to cart. Yes, we don't need that breakpoint anymore. We 
I'm gonna go to the car tab and now we have uh, have it here okay that's nice the image is not working right now but at least we have one I think we can change to four for example and everything will be updated okay that's nice we have fixed that so now we can uh, add items from the web page to the cart that is a native view uh, we can take a look how that looks again here we have the cart page it's a razor file but it is native UI you can recognize that we have the summary forms components or elements uh, as it's called SAML but here is this blazer it's a component so stack layout component component we have content view uh, the component if you have done some reforms development you think you probably think that is pretty familiar but there are some things that are different for example we need to have every uh, thing in uh, in a grid in a grid cell so we have one grid cell for every cell so then we can set the grid cell dot column o row and row span but to instead of like doing samples using at an attached properties grid dot row is and row span for example so we will do like this in blazer instead uh, when we are setting padding for example we will have to specify new thickness but otherwise it's pretty similar some forms if you have done some forms with saml it will be pretty easy for you to go and use uh, blazer mobile bandings as well uh, so if you know blazer it will also it will be even easier so i can recommend you to take a look at blazer mobile bindings if you're interested in uh, how the future of mobile development will look oh, maybe not the future i know Many people like SAML, I like SAML and like the bindings, it's pretty nice, but uh, when I'm using Blazor more and more, I think I can be more productive with that way of writing apps. There are not so much uh, properly changed events to keep track on. Now something happens that doesn't have happened before. I hear the fan of my MacBook Pro M1. So I'm streaming on the same machine now as uh, I'm doing the coding on. So it's uh, probably doing a lot of work. But interesting, that is the first time I've heard it. I have not heard it on the other streams I have done earlier either. So, okay, there are a fan inside of this uh, as in the specification, but I never heard it before. So, okay. Uh, interesting hopefully you don't hear it in the stream um, because I don't want the mic to take up it but okay uh, so let's continue to work with the app for a couple of minutes more uh, or we can show you how the backend looks we have a, a couple of functions to get all the data, we have functions to create the search index uh, with Azure's. But if you're interested of this, I recommend you to go to the GitHub repository. But I can show you fast about this. So, you, so if you don't watch my early streams, you, we can you get a, to know a little bit more about what we have done, so we can continue to work on this in the upcoming streams and you're very welcome to contribute and help me or ask questions in the chat because I have the chat on the other uh, monitor so I can see what what you write so if you have questions feel free to answer me and I will try to feel free to ask me not answer me I will try to answer uh, your questions so uh, if you have a question about why I'm doing something if I not describe it well, you're welcome to answer. Uh, so I will do my best to answer your questions. And also if you had feedback for how I do and stuff, write it in the chat or reach out to me in a DM on Twitter, uh, because I want to be better on doing this. I think it's really fun to streaming. I think it's fun to communicate with uh, you in the chat. So you're very welcome to 
to write to me either in chat or in on a DM. I, for example, on Twitter, I recommend you use Twitter. So I don't think we have that much time left. So it's an idea to start working on any new features in the app. We can uh, just do some overview. We have rebuild search index because this this is Azure Azure uh, that's Azure search service. Uh, and we're using Cosmos DB as the, the data store, so we we are building a search index from what we have there. So this is a rebuild function, and that will wipe out the search index and fetch all the products from the database and add them to the search index. Uh, but we don't do that rebuild. Every time we have changes in the database, because we also have one uh, function here that is update product index. And that function is listening on the Cosmos database. So if we have changes in the Cosmos database, it will trigger this function. And then we can, can index just this product. And product indexer is a class that we have built. We can navigate to that one. Uh, we have connection string to the Cosmos database. This is just because we need to, need to read some extra information. Uh, if the recreate flag is set, we recreate, we delete the search index. Um, and then we will, and we also create it if, if it not exist. And that could be when we're running this for the first time. Then we'll get a client. We also have an index model. We don't use in the product directly because we probably not want to index all the product data. And we also want to add some additional data that we don't have on the product in the database. For example, collections that also can be called categories, but this is data based on Shopify. And so, uh, and they call it collections. So I also call it collection here. So here we can see the product index model and the properties we set there. We also have some attributes for what uh, the search uh, engine should index. So we have, for example, is searchable. ID is searchable, uh, the SKU. Title is searchable, body is searchable. Image is not searchable, but it is retrievable. So we will have one image not all image on a product that we will get in the search results. So we can show an image there without having to do an extra uh, fetch of product data. So that's nice. Price is also retrievable because you don't want to search for price. You don't want to search for 10 and find all products that are uh, have the price of 10, but you maybe want to add a filter, for example, uh, of your search result, then you are able to do that because price is retrievable and uh, yeah collection names is both searchable and uh, it's but it's not retrievable because uh, um, collection names here is just a string and we in that string we have merged together multiple uh, collections so if you search for rods fishing rods for example uh, you can maybe have different categories of it. So it's fishing rods, it's jerkbill rods, uh, and everything is one string. So it, if you, it, you use a search for jerkbait, it will find the rod without having to do an exactly match there. So this is just to make the collections categories searchable. You don't want to show the use of that. If you need the categories, you need to go and fetch that from the database. Okay, the clock is soon one it's one minute left before i have to go and work again uh, as i said if you want to check out this code it's on github it's in on my uh, repository called tackle store here and i push all the code that we are doing to this repository so it will be easy for you to access it so thank you very much for watching my stream today. 
Uh, I will be back and it will not take a couple of weeks again. Hopefully, if we can stay healthy and things like that and not don't have too much work to do, but at least I will do this uh, once a week. Hopefully, I can continue to do this twice a week on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. So thank you very much for watching. You're welcome to send feedback to me. Uh, otherwise, see you on Thursday.